next to him where he has transformed himself from an indie filmmaker into a full blown professional. How did this metamorphosis happen? Generally, people graduate from writing to filmmaking. How did Piyush post graduate from filmmaking to writing and that to such a specialized genre, which is, I would say, sort of a rarity in India crime fiction? You know, people tend to attempt different kinds of genres, but crime fiction has been a rarity of a genre in India. So, Piyush. First, I just want to say thank you very much, Vidya, for being here for us with us in the evening. And Joy, thank you very much for moderating it. Uh, I just want to say, Joy, that I am still a filmmaker. I just took a little bit of a break and I've written these books, but I'm still a filmmaker. A lot of people are not looking at me as a filmmaker because I've been writing these books. And uh, I will not disappoint you. I'll be making a film very soon. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'm actually not graduated. I'm still in the process. I and I'm still graduate. finding my feet. Now I've written four books. I think I can call myself a writer, you know. But in my head, I'm still a filmmaker. So somehow when people say he's a writer, I say, but I'm a filmmaker. You know, then uh, I still haven't graduated my head. I just sit down and write some stories and, you know, they get printed. So I'm, I'm lucky, I guess. So do you visualize in words or images? I, I uh, absolutely in words. And uh, I don't even write. I don't have, my system is I, I don't actually type myself. I have a person who's a typist, uh, like my assistant who types for me. I just read out my sentences which form in my head and that comes to the book. He's not come today, but he's been thanked in the book, Kalpit. Yeah, he's my assistant. He's your, he's your medium. Yeah, he, his fingers, my... Uh, Vidya, coming to you, where does crime fiction rate in your list of uh, reading habits? Did you, did, was crime fiction or thriller uh, find a pride of place in your shelves when you were a young teenager, along with Milson Boons and other stuff? Firstly, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, congratulations, Piyush. Um, you know, Joy, uh, I read a lot of Ken Follett. So that is fan fiction, right? And I was obsessed. Anytime we were traveling, I would pick up a Ken Follett. Because then I wouldn't need to sleep until I finish the book. I would just keep reading. So Ken Follett was one of my favorites. I've read some others, but they've not stuck for some reason or the other. Uh, and then I think over the years I've begun to enjoy reading, um, you know, um, what we call thriller scripts, which is basically crime fiction. And uh, that's how I met you, also. And uh, he brought a script to me that I, I thought was fabulous. Uh, let's see what happens in that. But <laughs> and then he told me about this book. I said, you know, I'd love to read it. So he sent me three chapters. And I think that's very unfair. Because he sent me three chapters and I was dying to know what's happening next. I just wanted to keep her in suspense. <laughs> yeah. So I said, you know what? Come to the launch if I have to. But I want to know what's happening. So uh, I think he was just forced to invite me. <laughs> no, and then he asked me if I'd launch it. And that's how I'm here. But yeah, so I think my relationship or my liking for crime fiction is slowly growing. I mean, you starred in one of the rare suspense thrillers in popular cinema. You know? When we really look at uh, suspense crime thrillers in popular cinema, we don't find too many. You know, we, we had an Ittifaq way which could qualify as a suspense yes. thriller. We had a Jewel Thief much yes. before that. We had a Kahani. There have been very few and far between, you know. Uh, they often say in Indian cinema that when it comes to suspense thrillers and crime uh, fiction, they want to reveal the, the identity of the villain. You know, otherwise, uh, the audience doesn't have the patience for that kind of uh, what's your take on that? I think, you know, when villain uh, isn't revealed very early, it has its own charm also. Uh, for example, I can only think of Ole where Gabbar, it's not a kind filler, but I'm just saying his entry happens much later in the film, but the legend of Gabbar grabs you much before you see Gabbar. So that's one way of doing it. But uh, I think I'm... For example, in this book, I'm enjoying getting into the head of the serial killer. Because we all want to believe that criminals were 
you know, uh, deviant personalities. Uh, that you know, there is some kind of reason for the way they've turned out. So, in a sense, I'm very grateful that he's first introduced us to that, and then he'll take us into the crimes of this guy. Yush, I finished the book in close to what seven hours. I finished the book. Yeah, because he he's in Bombay. <laughs> you were in Calcutta. <laughs> Seven hours yesterday. Yesterday, I gave it to him only yesterday. yesterday. I couldn't put it down, frankly. Uh, it was riveting. But it was very dark, very dark, and sometimes mercilessly morbid. Where does that come from? I mean, looking at you, I know it doesn't reflect your personality. Neither the dark. So no. So when you write something like this, where do you borrow from? Is it pure imagination? Is it fascination for crime and uh, dark edges of human personality? Or is it because you do feel that this is something? Actually, uh, I think everybody has a dark side, you know. Everybody's got a dark side, and uh, I think my dark side is on steroids. But because you know, I, the minute I start tapping into it, all this stuff happens, and like these stories come in my head. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just I think it's Mumbai or something. I grew up out here. Maybe it was. I just don't know where it comes from. But I just uh, focus and uh, I start thinking about this uh, deadly stories. And every, I, I don't know. I always look at some, uh, you know, crazy aspect of of things. Like on the road, what if a, a car came and blew up, you know, blew up right in front of me? What would happen? So the what if uh, of life is is the, you know the dark what ifs of life is always a question. And from these arrive. My stories. I, mean, I just want to tell you my stories. You now, about you asked about the who done it. I like to do how catch him, you know. So I always reveal my character right in the beginning, and then I tell take you on this journey of how you catch or resolve or kind of bring that story to an end. So I, I involve you in the idea of of that person. And in this case, also, I wanted to kind of, like you said, you know, get you into the mind of the serial killer, and then take you along. And uh, you know, since you've read the book, you you have a better idea of how I've done it. Uh, I was quite fascinated by the form that you picked up in this book. You wrote it like uh, your antagonist in this uh, book writes it like a diary, but the diary she's writing, the information and the knowledge that she's putting. She's piecing together from the diary of the other antagonist. I call both of them antagonists because both have had a history. Yeah? So it's like a diary within a diary. You know, you remember Weathering Heights? There was a Basically, you, the idea is to flip the character, you know? Sometimes you look at the character as a positive light and suddenly you start looking at the character in the end, like in Kahani. The whole standing of the film. Yeah, everything changes. So my thing is that I keep doing that throughout my book. Like you don't know who is the antagonist and who is the protagonist. Even though one person might be a police person, the other person might be a serial killer. You don't know who is the good person, who is the bad person till it all gets resolved. You know, and that's my idea because that's what life is all about. You know, sometimes we're good, sometimes we're bad. Police people are good, police people are bad. Criminals are good, criminals are bad. That's how I keep it. You know, in this book, for example, uh, both the characters are fated to follow a certain direction. There are certain circumstances which are heaped on them, and they take a certain direction. But one person, there is the the character of the police lady, uh, who, they, they who actually, Mehdi uh, Prasad, who actually looks very much like you. So I'm just giving a hint. <laughs> she behaves also very much like you. You could be her. <laughs> Hint, hint. No. So uh, there is this uh, the, the idea of of a, a, a police woman who has a dark past. You know, I, I think that to me fascinated me the most. And then I looked at the dark man, and I said, who is the darker one of them all? Is the police woman a da uh, the uh, the darker person, or is the serial killer the darker person? So that's the question that I keep. You know. Throwing at the reader, and in the end, perhaps I answer it. I don't know whether I answer it or not. It, it depends on the reader, the perspective of the reader. I must add there that when I read it, I was imagining a film playing out. 
So uh, now that you've suggested this, maybe we should all take the cue and do something about it. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, and, and no, it's it's a mere coincidence that for the first time I'm playing a cop in a film called Teen, which I'm shooting for in Kolkata. When Piyush called me uh, with regard to the book, and uh, then when I read it, I knew about Maitri Prasad, who's also a cop, and I said, you know, everything's just falling into place. Yeah. <laughs> You know like how the heroes, they play cops in many movies, even the heroines can do that. It's allowed.